Hello, everyone. So we are going to be doing another user onboarding teardown today. And so thank you, Hiba, for telling us to go rip apart your onboarding for Soapbox HQ. So I'm just going to share my screen here, but this is what we're going to be doing. So how this essentially works for the onboarding teardowns is we use a framework to really just understand how this onboarding experience stacks up. So the three main things we're looking for, the first one being, does this actually bring me closer to experiencing your value proposition? So that's what I look for in the straight line onboarding experience. How quickly do you get me there? And then we're also trying to see, okay, what are the product as well as conversational bumpers? Like, are you guiding us towards that main outcome that you're promising on your website? So that's the quick overview of the framework, but we're not gonna spend too much time on that. In fact, we're actually gonna save time by using the tool to help you be more organized and save time. So um, I'm excited to dive in. I'm also putting a timer to see how quickly you get the value. Awesome, perfect. So we're gonna not waste any time here and just get started because it's free. So I click the get started button. It shoots me on over to a new window and now it's asking me three different options here. So I can sign up with Google, uh, add to Microsoft team, never heard of that one. Um, or if my company has already used Soapbox, I can sign in below. So that's kind of nice. I'm sure they've had a lot of people signing up for accounts. That's maybe it's, it's someone else on their team that already has an account. So that's actually really great for reducing friction and support time. Um, I know that's a big issue for a lot of companies. So initially on this page, what I really thought they did well is it's clean. I can clearly see exactly what I need to do and I'm seeing, all right, I just need to choose my signup method and that's it. As well as seeing a quote from Intercom is really reassuring. I immediately see trust. I, I can see they are using it, they're liking it, and it makes me just wanna sign up a lot more. So from a motivation perspective, as well as ease of use, um, this one's 10 out of 10. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think the, the first thing, just to give you some stats, I was doing CRO for one of uh, clients of mine and I found out that uh, People don't even like to add their email address. They quickly just click on the Google button or the Facebook button, which is there. So that was a really best way to actually add, reduce friction. And having a nice uh, testimonial that I recommend to all my clients and all my customers to add a testimonial and coming something from Intercom, it's, it's, it's amazing that they have already added it. So they are doing everything right on this screen actually. Yeah, and so what I would also imagine here too is that the onboarding experience is probably gonna be pretty different depending on which one of these I use. Since if I remember correctly, I believe Soapbox is a Slack integration, which I could totally be wrong. Um, but I'm just gonna sign up with Google to see how this experience stacks up. So right now, it did a little pop-up, so you probably can't see my screen. Can you confirm, is that? I, I, can't, I cannot see your screen. I just can't see that uh, you have something is running from the back. Okay, so, perfect. So yeah, I, no. I've completed that first step, which was, it was really simple. It's just one of those simple Gmail pop-ups that says, all right, allow the permissions. Um, so nothing fancy there that was really worth commenting too much. So now it's asking me organization name. So this is an interesting step. Before I, I kind of put in my thoughts here, I'm asking myself, why does this matter? Is this actually getting me closer to saving time? Do I really need to do this? This is one of those things like you see in onboarding experiences where it's like upload your photo. What color do you want your photo background to be? Like, is it a must have? I don't know. I would probably say it's not. What are your thoughts? I can't comment until we actually go inside, but I think here they say that this is the name that will be used for your soapbox. Again, I, I, I I think they are hinting that this is first for organizations, so they want to reduce the, the they want to qualify the right people. So it's not for consumers. And the second thing is that um, what I'm learning from this is that they are only looking for businesses. So people who are not business might drop out there and they want this to happen. But I would have said like something extra, like if I don't know so what Soapbox is, I have not gone through the entire website. I don't know what Soapbox, Soapbox is. I would have rather added an advantage, like by adding your company's name, you would get yeah. this out of it. And so that, that gives me motivation to add my email, but my, my, my company name as well. Definitely. And so I'm just going to see, because you're totally right in terms of why they want us to do this step. They need us to set up the URL. 
So it makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna do something that's probably already taken and see what happens. Well, it gave me John, so that's surprising. <laughs> okay, so now it's asking me like, what URL do I wanna use? Um, so that's really interesting. Now I, I have to do this step again. So I'm gonna see John and John's not used. So this whole step could have completely been removed. For instance, if someone has an organization name that is not taken, just give them that URL. And it's that easy. So there's some steps here that I'm already thinking about saying, you know what, we don't actually probably need this step. Do you feel the same way? I feel the same way. One thing I really like in here is that, that whatever do I do on the left side, it shows on the right side as well, which is kind of building also that motivation. This is going to be my workspace. Um, yeah. Interesting, right? So. Uh, first my name and then my URL motivates me to look forward and see how, and then at the end it says anyone ending at productlet.com will be also looking at it. So I think that's very interesting as well. Yeah. And this little check the box, I'd almost label it as an advanced step. Like, do I really need to know this right now? Is this mission critical for me to figure out right now? Not really. Like maybe if I'm sharing the workshop with someone, ask me, check the box. Can we just add anyone with this specific URL? That would be contextual. And that would make a lot of sense to do that step at that specific time. Right now, it's a little forward. And I don't really see the, the exact use case for this just right now, if I'm being honest. Um, but the one thing I, I will give credit that we haven't actually given credit to yet is a conversational bumper here. I think it's always great in an onboarding experience to really just be there for the people if they do have specific questions. And so I like that they're making it easy to really communicate with their staff and they're there from the beginning. So I'm just going to create the soapbox and see if John is not taken. So it's taken a little while to load, but here I am going to my little environment here. And now we're in, I can immediately see 13 days left of pro. Um, one thing I like here is that what's included in pro, um, you will be surprised by how many times people just say like, get started for free. And they don't actually tell people like, what are you getting in this package? And it's great to actually emphasize that. So if I do click that, uh, it gives me a little pop up of what it can be, uh, what I get with that. There is a lot going on here. Yikes. Uh, in terms of the pricing model, that looks confusing. I won't get too much into that because we're really focused on the onboarding experience there, but um, I did like the, the initial thought around that. And so we see right here, 30 seconds away from more productive meetings. And to be honest, I think they could do a better job of creating an empty state here because there's a lot of buttons. I can see create agenda, create agenda. Uh, all of these say create agenda. Why not just say create your agenda? Give me one button and make it simple because right now it's like, there's tons of little things I can do here. Um, a lot of them are, seem the same. Like, is this really necessary? Could I just have uh, one, one on me one meeting little button and then when I'm inserting, like create the agenda, then it's monthly or weekly. Like there's very little variance between these that I can at least initially see from the onset. But what are your thoughts on the dashboard? Well, there are six options. We, we recommend to our users to have one, ideally, if not one, then three, if they really want to have it. Uh, but six options do not make sense to me. Uh, they're asking a lot, even on the search box, they say control slash plus slash, which is again, another thing to ask me. Then view all is another thing to ask me. So I will not, I will be less likely to finish a step if I see it's so overwhelming on my face. Uh, but they know this that's very overwhelming and then they say you're 30 seconds away from more product meetings so they kind of still motivating me but i would yeah. i would just say like three options three options are good enough i would not even put 13 days left pro on left like you know this this specific button unless i have finished a step right so i would like to finish a step as you said bowling alley framework could directly go to create the first agenda and that's yeah. what the aha moment is right so i'm still missing my aha moment because I haven't looked at the landing page at all, so I'm still waiting, what, what is this app about? Yeah, and I, I think it also begs the question of, like, what is the differentiator here? 
Um, is it the fact that you can do monthly or weekly meetings? It's like, no, like I can go to Google Calendar and create a monthly or weekly calendar invite. That's fine. I, I can do that already. But I just want to see what's different about this. So maybe in the initial onboarding, it could have been invite a colleague or have that first meeting and really get people towards that next step a little bit closer because now when I create the agenda, I'm sure it'll ask me some of these stuff. But yeah, exactly. Invite a user to this one-on-one. -on -one. So that would have been a really important mission critical step, regardless of what kind of meeting you do, whether it's monthly or weekly. Um, so I would recommend for Soapbox to really look at like what are those must have steps and really try and eliminate some of those other non-necessary steps. For instance, if we go back to the Bowling Alley framework, um, if we're looking at like what could that main experience be that would be the most valuable for people is probably scheduling that first one-on-one. -on -one. So what are those things getting in the way of people doing that? So we asked, for instance, the first step was, what is your organization name? The second step was, what is that URL? Do, do people really need to do all those steps? Do they really need their own environment? Eventually, sure, they, they could get their own environment because I understand um, people like to share the URLs with their team URL in there. So there is value there, but is it necessary at that particular step? So that's something I would challenge in the onboarding flow. And I think for conversational bumpers, they did a good job just being there throughout the whole process. It was really simple. It wasn't intrusive in my opinion. Um, product bumpers, what are your thoughts? Well, I did not, uh, so I, the, I did see that there were a lot of tool tips in there and under it, and they used a nice emojis in there in terms of product bumpers. Um, but I have to be really honest, I still don't know what's great about them. I can use Google Calendar and uh, I see that it's kind of a calendar scheduling kind of an app. Um, I think in terms of bringing till here was fine, but it could get a lot better by just directly taking me to the aha moment. Yeah. My aha is still not there. Like I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to, uh, to know what the app does without even looking at the landing page and what's great about them. So yeah. yeah and I, I think okay. with an app like Soapbox, the biggest, uh, competitor here is just the status quo doing the meetings like you're already doing them and so um, I yeah I'm with you I, I want to see what's different about this first and there's some steps in there that are really kind of getting in the way of me actually seeing okay like once I schedule that first meeting maybe it's at that point once I do that or maybe it's the second meeting that I will really start to feel that I understand this and then I'm probably more likely to do a full team meeting and get to that next step so that's kind of the overall feel. I did want to make one comment though, from the initial sign-on experience to actually going to the product and going through the product to an organization name and URL step, that felt like it was the exact same product experience. Whereas sometimes you go into a product that you're signing up for and then you finally sign up and you're like, whoa, this feels completely different. Um, so kudos to the product experience team for making this feel really seamless. Uh, it was a great job. So any other thoughts, Zar? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, the sign up form was great, especially in terms of personalization. Um, I really like that. Um, I would also like the page that you were before, there were three steps, create yeah. a meeting, invite some, invite a teammate, and third one was to, um, I think there was a meeting schedule, something like that. Yeah, the schedule meeting. I think this is something, these are three clear steps that I can get it. Okay, this is a something like meeting, sharing app and that's my aha moment uh, for and uh, i like the fact that they're using a progress bar which is zero of zero but i would have said one out of three instead of zero out of zero um and um, i think um, I, I, as i said like i think the, the app looks very nice um and the aha moment is not there but so that's the sign up form was still good enough to tell me that okay this is like from the beginning they should tell me, okay, this is what I'm going to achieve. And I couldn't see that. Um, in terms of a personalization, it looks very nice before and after the sign up as well. Uh, if I were to change something, I would put those three uh, top meeting agenda created, invite a team member and to do the meeting. I would have done that immediately to time to reduce the time to value. And yeah. then later on say, hey, you can add a description. Hey, you can invite somebody. Hey, you can add some notes. Um, this is what you can do later on. But I, that would have, would have been the best version and i think one thing we we all uh, like we all miss during the onboarding in general as well where does the context is the, what is the context specifically for specific users so 
uh, if they are coming from Google Calendar, specifically everybody must be coming from Google Calendar. So how can you change that? So uh, for example, remember the last onboarding, they said import everything from Evernote. So they, they knew they wanted to know the context, the notion one. And so here I think they need to know if the context, if the user is first time user or the like an existing user, what they already used to maybe they can customize it. But again, that's an advanced step. Uh, but I think these are my, my thoughts um, regarding, I would reduce everything and just create a message, invite a teammate, you do a meeting, the, the, the sign up form is great and personalization looks very good. And kudos on the copy and the using of emojis there, I really like it. Yeah, and the last thing you know, when we were talking I was just thinking about is that whenever it comes to the, the overall straight line onboarding experience, it's not necessarily just always reducing and cutting out all these steps Sometimes it makes more sense to add one step so you can save yourself a lot of other steps later on and get people closer to that outcome. So an example would be um, whenever I'm looking at the agenda, like that's a big ask. Like what, if you ask me, for instance, like what kind of meeting are you trying to have? Is this like a monthly check-in meeting to see how you're progressing? Is this maybe a, a new hire or is this a weekly marketing meeting catch up? And really just understanding like what is that first outcome that someone wants for this meeting and then you can really wow them with a really in-depth uh, details about that specific kind of meeting that they really do care about. So um, that's the, the overall suggestion. And I hope you found this useful.